Here is your ultimate guide to Street Fighter 6 and everything you need to know to improve your skill set and master the game. Take it one step at a time. First things first, my dudes, if you enjoy fighting game content, make sure to subscribe here for more as we have new videos Monday and Friday. Keep in mind as we get started that no matter what control type you use, modern or classic, these tips and tricks, as long as you follow correctly and consistently, are going to help you become a better player. So the first thing that I can tell you is, of course, I have my own playlist on how to play every character, card up top, or watch it in the comments down below. But even if you watch my videos or not, there's going to be character guides in the game. So you want to know, okay, how do I play Jamie? Right here in this list, you can start from the very beginning what the game plan for Jamie is, and then go over all the special moves, what they do, maybe some best strategies when using the special moves, including the super arts. They even give you some nice fundamental strategies and even some advanced strategies. It's just super nice because it just gives you some nice, simple tricks, just like I'm doing right now for you, but per character. And if you want more in-depth guides, again, I have my own videos up top. Learning and picking a main character for you is your first step in this journey to be a better player, because if you just try every single character here, you're not going to be really good with one character, right? It's kind of like trying to learn all the instruments. I want to learn trombone, the drums, the guitar. Well, if you spend more time on just one instrument, you're going to be better at that one instrument than trying to learn four or five at one time. Same with the characters. And then once you master a character, move on to another and so on. Now, when it comes to game plan and gameplay tips and tricks for any character or just how you play the game in Street Fighter 6, honestly, the best offense is sometimes the best defense. And Street Fighter 6 really gave you a lot of defensive options. You see those bars up top? That is our drive gauge. We can do a lot with our drive gauge. Yeah, you can enhance special moves. We have our uppercut there. We can enhance it if we want to for more damage and different properties. When it comes to defense, Street Fighter 6 has a universal parry called the drive parry that uses drive meter, but in this stance, we're going to parry any move. And here's what I mean. If I see my opponent coming in for an attack, I'm just going to parry it. There we go. You have another awesome mechanic called the drive impact. The great move that gives you armor and allows you to go through your opponent's hits and hit them. And if you're in the corner and you hit it, you get a nice wall slump for a free combo. So for an example, if you punish your opponent mid-screen, you also get that slump as well for the same free combo you want. It is pretty slow on startup, so if I see my opponent going for it, I can just do mine and beat theirs. So, see how I beat Ryu, now I get a free combo off. So it's something that you don't want to spam, but something you want to keep in mind for more of a defensive mechanic. Is my opponent really pressuring me in the corner? What can I do? Okay, I can get out of it with drive impact or vice versa. They're trying to get out of the corner. I'm going to keep them in the corner with drive impact, get a free combo off. But it's not something that you just want to throw out there for fun. Plan accordingly. Another defensive mechanic is called the drive reversal. And what this looks like, first, let me show you. So what you saw there was the reversal part of the name drive reversal. And what we're doing is we're just turning the tables and taking our turn back. And how you do so, you got to be in block stun. So we have to be blocking our opponent's attacks or their combo. And then you press forward drive impact. And then you get the reversal animation. And then you get, you turn the tables onto your opponent, put the pressure back onto them. An offensive mechanic using the drive meter that you can do is while you're in pair, you can press forward forward and you dash towards them. And that rush can be used in combos if you really want to. It's not necessarily defensive, it's more offensive, but it's something you can do as well. Another great thing in Street Fighter 6 is we have supers. We have three supers, actually. So you see there in the bottom right for Ryu, we have, we're on level three. So we got three, two, and one. All of our supers access to. We have our first one here, which is just like a nice sandblast super. Our number two super for just some great hits. Now, the tip I have for you is don't just throw them out. They're not meant to be thrown out like willy-nilly. Like, for an example, the Luke Super R2 you just saw there doesn't have great range. So if we just throw it out there like this, we're going to miss it. You see how close we are, but we still missed it. And then you just kind of wasted your super bar, so you got to build them back up to hopefully get it later. I'd recommend doing them in a combo of sorts, so that way you really guarantee you get the hit off like this. Some supers aren't necessarily meant for damage either. Some get you out of a situation. Like for an example, Manon Super Art 1 is a low hitting super really quick and just switches sides with you and your opponents. So I'm in the corner, for example, I'm playing Manon. My Super Art 1 sure does damage, but it's mainly used for reasons that aren't just damage. So I'll use it here, go under them, switch sides. Now they're in the corner for my pressure to go back onto them. And other supers like Jury Super Art 2 on the surface don't really do anything. Like no damage is being done right now. So you're like, wait, why, why, why am I using this super? I'm getting no damage off. Well, as you see here, once powered up, you will be able to cancel normal moves into other normal moves or even unique attacks. So Jury Super Art 2 allows you to make your own combos just free willy nilly, which is crazy. So for an example, our back heavy does not go into our forward heavy, right? But if we're powered up with our super art, it actually does. And you can turn that in any kind of combo you want. 
So even though Jury Super Art 2 doesn't necessarily do damage, it allows you to take control and do as much damage as you want to. Or other characters like Jamie, the Super Art 2 just puts you into drunk level four state instantly, which if you play Jamie, you know gives you a big advantage. So the biggest tip there for the supers is understand what your supers do and probably when is best to utilize them in a fight, whether it be in a combo more defensively, don't just throw them out there. Keep in mind when playing Street Fighter 6, it's not always about giant combos, who does the most damage. It's honestly about reading your opponent and punishing them accordingly. And sometimes playing rock, paper, scissors. So if I see my opponent parrying, well, what beats that? A grab beats that. When doing stuff like this, keep in mind that any damage is good damage. That includes pokes, sweeps, simple two hit combos. Over time, that damage racks up. Again, sometimes the best offense is the best defense. You're kind of like shimming around here. What do I do? How do I rush in there? How do I get in there? Do I want to throw a projectile to kind of put pressure on them? Do I rush in for an overhead? While my opponent is trying to be more defensive, do I rush in for a special attack? It's more or less about how do I fight my opponent than who can do the biggest combos. And I think a lot of new players get intimidated by that they think okay i have to do like all these crazy combos to be really good at the game it's like yeah sure they help with damage but honestly at the end of the day you can just easily get out poked by somebody out grabbed by somebody and simply just outplayed by somebody i know ryu's gonna want to do his shuriken a lot so when he does i'm just gonna block it and punish it Fighting games are more of a mind game than actually fighting. And notice what I just said there. I know that Ryu wants to do his Shuriken for anti-air and so on. That is a big thing because if you know your opponent almost better than they do, that's a big advantage. So a big tip that might take a while, honestly, is you really just want to learn every character as much as you can. Because if I know my opponent's moves and I know their game plan, like for Ken, for example, he's a rush character. He wants to get in there. So what's Ryu going to do? Probably Shuriken, probably Hadouken, get some fireballs out there to push me back a little bit. I'm not saying you should probably learn every character to at least a little bit but i'm kind of saying you should learn every character at least a little bit which again that one takes time but it'll help you in the long run for sure just the basic i'm not saying learn 18 hit combos with every single character street fighter is more of a footsies game as i was just saying you got a lot of pokes you got a lot of just simple combos like this you got the parry the drive impacts what that means is you're more ground fighting compared to some other fighting game you can go in the air and start combos off of that sure almost every character in the game has a great anti-air so if my opponent's jumping in well i have also have a great anti-air to get them out of the air i can try and fireball them sure but they jump over it well what do i do anti-air so what i'm getting at is don't just jump in willy-nilly you got a plan do i want to rush in do i want to dash in and block dash in block do i want to dash in and drive impact just to cover myself or do you really want to jump in people jump in far too often and they get really punished how do you choose a main in street fighter 6 and what are some things to consider before choosing one well i'm here to help you today to figure that out now how do you choose a main because there are so many characters in street fighter 6 and there's more to come and i think all these principles can apply to almost any fighting game smash mortal Kombat, whatever i think the first thing you want to do is honestly just just who looks cool who looks fun to you like in my case when i first saw the gameplay reveal trailer for street fighter 6 i was leaning towards manon regardless of tier list or who's good or not she just looked cool she looked fun to play for those that actually know my background i was a dancer for years so to see a dancer fighter in a new fighting game was really cool to me so off the bat i was like well i'm gonna give her a shot even though she's not my typical player style she just looked cool so that is the first step who just looks fun to you there are some characters that i see and i'm like yeah they look cool but i just don't think they're that cool like i'm gonna be real with you i think gihan does great he's a great character he's fun but seeing his gameplay he just doesn't not look that cool or that that fun to me you know what i'm saying but other people might really enjoy honda they might see him and go wow that guy looks awesome he looks like so much fun and that's totally cool but i think that is the first step honestly you just be, screw tier list screw who's good or bad who just looks fun who just looks cool cool to you once you figure that out then honestly it's just a whole period of testing them out and i'm not gonna lie to you i've been testing manan out for quite some time now these past few days since the game launched and my results are kind of wishy-washy i think she's great but her game plan and strategy is just a bit different than what i'm used to so i'm kind of in the boat of like do i stick with her and learn her game plan and master her or do i go to a different main where they might fit my you know hand muscle memory a bit better my kind of my own personal game plan what i like like in a character it's kind of hard because anybody could stick with a character they think looks great like me sticking with manon but at the end of the day you don't have to i might stick it out and master her become a true manon main i'm not sure yet but that's the point right that is the second step because we are taking it one step at a time so once you find out who looks cool and fun try them out test them out play more than a few matches online playing for a couple hours in training lab them up really feel how the character plays and go oh this is the character's game plan this is how they're supposed to play do i like that or am i looking for something a bit 
bit different. Transitioning to that next step, step three is consider their toolkit. Because you gotta consider if it's something a bit different than what you originally wanted, you have to consider the character's toolkit and what they come with. And kind of just like what you desire to have in a character. For an example, for me, I actually played Raiden in Mortal Kombat 9, X, and 11. And the reason why is I like to have a teleport in my character because I like to get in their face if I'm getting zoned out. I like to have more than a few mix-ups in my arsenal. I like to have a projectile if needed. And I'm gonna be real with you, Manon doesn't have any of that. She's got no projectiles. She's got no teleport. She's got no nothing besides her own feet to get her in there. That's just what I like. Some people don't care if they have a projectile or not. Some people don't care if they have a teleport or not. Again, you have to sit down and go, okay, what do I want in my character? Do I want a really good anti-air? Do I want a really good projectile or an okay one? And if you don't care about any of that, guess what, Zangief, Manon, Marissa, Cammy, characters like that might fit more towards your style because they don't have any of those things that you don't care about. Or vice versa, you might be a player that says, you know what, I just have to have some form of projectile in my arsenal because I like to have that in my back pocket just in case. Then characters like Ryu, Ken, Luke, Guile, or DJ, these characters that have those in their arsenal might be better fit for you. Then you got to narrow it down. Okay, so these characters have a projectile, so I'm already leaning towards these characters now. Guile and DJ, they have charge inputs where Ryu and Ken don't. Am I okay with that? Do I prefer that? Then go test them out. Test out Guile, test out Ken, and consider, do I prefer the charge inputs that Guile has in his combos, or do I prefer the moveset that Ken has? I hate to say it, but there's no like actual definitive answer of like, hey, here's one thing you have to consider when picking a main, and then you'll have your main guaranteed. Nope, it's honestly just a big trial and error that takes some time, but that's the beauty of it, right? You get to test out all these characters and go, oh, okay, so I do like Guile a little bit, but actually, I, I, I think I prefer Ken a bit more, and that's totally cool, or vice versa, because not only do you have to consider their their kit and like what they offer, but you also have to consider their play style. Guile plays very different than Ken, even though they both have projectiles, good anti-airs and more. They might seem similar on the surface, but they play very differently. Because Guile has charge inputs, he's a bit more defensive character and punishing his opponent, where Ken is like, I'm gonna rush in there and do whatever the freak I want. How do you prefer to play? You might not know the answer to that question, by the way. So that is why you need to go in and test. Test him in the lab, test him online in casual matches and say, oh, this is how Guile is supposed to play i'm being a bit more defensive and i'm even though i'm winning i'm not i'm not really feeling that game plan you know what i'm saying same thing with ken oh he's a bit more of a russian i actually like that a lot more i like that i can get in there fast and do some fun combos that's totally cool a lot of people like to go towards the tier list and say oh well this pro player said that ken is actually the top tier so i'm gonna i'm gonna disregard everybody else every other character and i'm just gonna play ken because some pro said that he was the best and what people don't stop to consider is we live in a day and age of constant updates, constant patches that nerf some characters, that buff some characters. So let's say, sure, let's say Ken is the best character of all Street Fighter 6 and you decide to play Ken, you might get a couple of dubs and feel really good about it, but guess what? In about a week or even tomorrow or this morning, Street Fighter might come out and say, hey guys, we came out with a balance patch and we nerfed Ken. Well, now your main is mid-tier, so what are you gonna do? Stick with Ken or are you gonna go to the next top tier character? 20 years ago, that could work because the character never changed in the game. You could pick the best character and that best character would always be the best where now we're always changing and not only that but i'm a very firm believer on it's not about how good the character is it's how good the player is the person behind the controller has to master themselves and any character they fit they could probably go and dominate with whoever they choose because they know how to punish their opponent they know how to mix them up they know when to jump in and when not to jump in they know how to read and react to drive impacts and so much more i mean let's just be honest a really good player could pick a really bad character and still be a really good player and dominate other people and vice versa a really bad character that says i'm gonna pick the top tier character they could pick the top tier character but still be a really bad player so let's recap what are the biggest things you need to consider when picking a main and how do you pick one ultimately who looks fun who looks cool start right there because you oh, why would you main somebody that doesn't look fun to you that makes no sense test them out how do they feel they look fun at first but how do they feel to you have you understood their game plan can you execute it consistently these are things to consider they're fun they look really cool to me so i tested them out oh my gosh i actually really do enjoy their game plan i i can i think i can stick with this or vice versa i don't like their game plan they looked fun at first but i don't think i can do this consistently that's cool restart i do like their game plan they do look fun to me and what do i want in their kit i need a projectile i need a good anti-air so i'm gonna go with these characters too ryu's got a good projectile he's got a good anti-air so i'm gonna go with him oh man i do want to play zangief but he's got no projectile so i think he's out of the picture for me i got a couple options now that i found my top five i'm gonna be guile dj ken luke or ryu because they all have really good stuff they have good anti-airs good projectiles things that 
that I want in my kit. Now, how do they play? What is their game plan? What is the demand of me as a player? Okay, so DJ and Guile have charge inputs. I'm not a fan of that. So now I'm narrowed it down to three and then just go from there. Keep testing them out. Who feels the best to you now that you've found something that looks fun? You like their game plan? You like their toolkit? If you don't care for projectiles or anti-airs or anything like that, you might go for a grappler because you just love the idea of grabbing something and doing big damage. So Zangief might be your guy or vice versa. Biggest tip is don't just go for the top tier list characters because that's going to get you nowhere. You want to have fun. You want to enjoy your character and it needs to fit your wants in a character. So I'm going to stick with Manon myself, but who knows? I might be switching it up here later. I might be going with Luke, although I do like the idea of Marissa. She seems like a lot of fun to me. So I'm going to go do my own testing. Street Fighter 6 has classic control inputs that might seem intimidating or overwhelming to new players and beginners because Street Fighter 6 also has modern controls to help ease in new players and beginners like yourself. But what are modern controls and how do they work and how do they compare to classic? So to put it quite simply, Street Fighter 6's classic controls allow you to have six attack buttons, three punches, three kicks. You got light punch, medium punch, and heavy punch and vice versa light kick medium kick heavy kick because you have six attack buttons when working with classic you also have special moves such as your sand blast but with special moves that means you have three versions of the same special move you have a light sand blast medium sand blast and heavy sand blast so you can already imagine how complicated it can get when using classic controls having to work with all these normal moves you have and all these special moves you have even in the control list you can see here that our special moves have certain inputs such as damage down, diagonally down and then forward punch so what that means is you have to push down diagonally down forward punch to get your sand blast to go out if you just do down forward punch it's not gonna happen not only that but when using classic controls you also have a very restrictive time frame data wise when it comes to linking your normals together so for an example let's say we're using classic controls and we want to do our down medium kick into our flash knuckle special move well the timing is pretty dang quick you gotta do down medium kick and then down back punch but as you see though they came one after the other they didn't quite link together to make a true combo but if we're faster there we go not only do special moves have our inputs we have to do for your classic input here but also so do our super arts as you see here for our vulcan blast we have to do down diagonally down forward down diagonally down forward punch so let's give it a shot so there we go if you see the left hand side there i had to do all those inputs for our super to actually come out one step why are you explaining classic controls i came here to learn about modern i know but you need to understand how classic actually works so then you can understand what's really going on with modern and here we go so to put it quite simply modern just makes everything we went over way easier thus allowing new players beginners even vets like myself to have a good time come in a little bit easier to a character learn that character and just learn their moveset a lot easier now the biggest difference with modern is you don't have six attacks you have three attacks you just have light, medium, heavy. The game decides what you're gonna do. You're not gonna do, uh, if I press light, we're not gonna do light kick, we're doing light punch. So I'm learning Luke on modern, right? Let's say I'm doing that. Well, my light button is light punch. I don't have a light kick as of this moment in learning. I only have light, I have medium, and I have heavy. So it looks like for Luke, if I'm learning Luke on modern, I only got punches for my buttons here. Now, how is it easier? Well, your specials are one move. So our sand blast is quite literally, one button i'm just pressing the special button and we're getting sand blast now you might ask yourself well how do i get the light sand blast the medium sand blast the heavy sand blast uh you don't you just get sand blast so that is kind of a con right there you do not get the levels essentially to your specials you just get the special as the game gives you specials you only get one version of them but they are far easier to input because our sand blast is just one button our uppercut is forward special so you just hold forward while you do the special button and you get the rising uppercut. So as you can already imagine, whoa, that is way easier. I can just do specials like crazy for days, sandblast, uppercut, what? Yeah, that's kind of the point of modern. So yes, it makes it far easier physically to do moves, combos, and even specials and supers. And of course it makes it easier to even learn the character and how they work and kind of what their moveset, you know, kind of consists of. I mean, when it comes to supers even, our supers, rather than doing like down, down like diagonally forward, down diagonally forward punch, we're literally just gonna push special and heavy together and that's our super watch this ready bop, bop. that's our super that's how easy supers can be pulled off in modern our other supers are just back and the same inputs this is our super art 2 you want to do super art 3 just hold down and do the same thing 
So again, as you can see, special supers combos are just way easier to pull off. Not only are supers easier to pull off, but they come out way faster because essentially, yeah, sure, in classic, I can do down forward, down forward punch pretty fast, sure, but it's not as fast as pushing two buttons together. That's that's too fast. So essentially, you're doing what we call in the fighting game community, frame one supers. Like as soon as the super can come out, it's coming out. I personally play on a fight pad myself for fighting games, but I know a lot of people, and even me including, I used to, we used to play on control controller which I'm, which I'm assuming a lot of you do keep this in mind for modern in a game like street fighter where classic has six attacks well there's only four buttons on the controller so your other two attacks heavy punch heavy kick are actually returned into the triggers here on the side and i'm not gonna lie to you i didn't really quite like that i was like all my attacks are on the front and then my triggers are also attacks well when using modern you only have four attacks you got three attacks and one special button so they're all kind of on the face of the controller you have attack 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 you know light medium heavy and then your special all up here allowing you to map the triggers to i don't know grab drive impact parry whatever you want but the point is on a controller all your attacks and specials are on the front face so that's a small pro to think about if you play controller not only are specials and supers and even combos way easier to pull off but in modern you get what's called assisted combos so we have an assist button right here i'm holding it down you can't really see it. that's not doing anything until i press buttons so you see in our modern command list we have assisted combo so while i'm holding down the assist button i can press light 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 and i get a combo off so two things to note first let's just do the full combo you have to have drive meter and a super ready to rock so if i just do it it's just, I, I, i'm literally pressing one button as you saw i did two punches two normals an enhanced special and then a super art and all i did was press one button over and over again if we press assist light twice we get low kick low punch and then we can stop there and do a special such as our rising uppercuts we can go you know assist light light uppercut and that's three hit combo whereas if i hadn't pressed assist and just done light light i would have just my two hit combo here so let's go ahead and break it down in a couple bullet points in modern you get easier specials you get easier super you get assisted combos and a little bit more lenient frame data when it comes to trying to link your normals together it makes it a little bit easier so i can just do this 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 and then special and that's to be easier to pull off when it comes to frame data between those moves and those specials now you might be thinking to yourself well if it's this easy why isn't everyone just doing modern you're not wrong but there are definitely some drawbacks to you using modern controls and the biggest one is you actually lose 20 percent damage when it comes to your specials and your supers so to show you in real time not only what i mean by how it looks and the difference in damage i'm going to do a simple enhanced flash knuckle uppercut and then a super and we'll see the damage i'm just going to do super one both light let's do it ready You see our full super there, that is 2,800 damage. This is on classic. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on modern. So let's enhance it and then just do our super. 2240, and that's with every move of the Sandblast Super hitting. So we're losing 560 damage. So that is the biggest drawback I can think of so far for using Modern. Not only that, but of course, when using your specials, you lose out on the ability to do your certain levels of the specials. So if I want to do Sandblast Light, I, I don't get to choose. I just do Sandblast. Now, that can be a trade-off, right? So you can take that at face value and say, well, I don't really care that I'm losing the levels of the specials. I'm just going to learn the character as they give me for Modern. So I'm not going to think about it like, oh, Luke has three levels of Sandblast. I'm going to think about it like he just has Sandblast. And that's not a problem. That's kind of what I do. So when I learn a character on Modern, I think, okay, I have Sandblast, but but that's that, that that's kind of just what they have. They have Sandblast. I don't need to worry about other levels. I just think, okay, my, my special move is Sandblast, and that's just, that's just what it is. If I wanted to do low kick, I have to press assist, then light, and that's my low light kick. So that's kind of a trade-off to you. Do lose out on a couple of normals that you might want to use if you were using classic. But to be fair, you do have a lot of them. Like if I wanted to do low medium kick, I got my low medium kick. So of course there are some trade-offs when using modern controls and you gotta kind of weigh the options. Do I want to lose out on the options I have for normals and the levels of specials that I can use and also take down that 20% extra damage for specials and supers? Or do I want to take the time to learn the quote unquote complicated version of classic control input? To be honest, I think it's personal preference. I actually really enjoy modern. I think it is fun and I think it's a great option 
for new players like yourself maybe that are coming into street fighter 6 for the very first time ever and learning okay what what are these modern controls and they will help you learn a character in my opinion quite easily and then maybe maybe once you get the character down you can move over to classic controls and gain access to their full kit but also you don't ever have to do you can just keep using modern forever and who cares it's all personal preference anyway you just got to think about the pros and the cons and what do you want to do with that i'm not gonna lie to you i see why classic is enticing but i also love the idea of modern how does drive impact street fighter 6 wait is it how does drive impact impact street fighter 6 because there's drive impact as the move or is it how does drive comma impact street fighter 6 drive impact impact fussin i've been seeing all over twitter and i'm talking everywhere all the pros even the casual players talk about this new mechanic for street fighter 6 called drive impact for those that don't know in simple terms drive impact is a move that has a lot of armor it goes through some hits and then allows you to hit your opponent and if you're close to a corner gets you a, a, a wall slump or like put your opponent in a dazed state basically allowing you to get a free combo off it's just a new mechanic in the game and long story short there's a lot of controversy over this new mechanic and whether or not people enjoy it and see here's the thing people always do this whether you're pros or not it's mainly the pros because they're like i'm on a high level of gameplay i need to make sure that i have my opinion is out there on these new mechanics for the game nobody cares but again they always do this for any new iteration for a fighting game like for an example when mortal kombat 11 came out people were pissed that the fatal blow was a guaranteed thing it was no longer tied to your enhanced bars they were so upset that you could just automatically get a fatal blow and you're below i think it was like 30 percent. i think it was but people were so upset well i liked it better in mortal kombat x when i had to save up my bars to use my fatal blow or my x-ray well two things one street fighter 6 is doing the exact same thing where their super is actually separate from their enhanced bars and two the game has to change it up like every game not just fighting games any game racing rpgs whatever every sequel is going gonna be different well like at least we hope so right because if it's the same game then we might as well just be playing the same game like if you liked how mortal kombat x played or liked how street fighter 5 played way better than, than, than 6 or you know 11 then just go play street fighter 5 why don't you just keep playing mortal kombat x just keep playing the prequel if you don't like the sequel and from these tweets from people on twitter they've been saying that on a high level of gameplay that drive impact isn't even used a lot so then what's the complaint if it's not really being used then why do you care it's in the game at all anyways and besides that it's a mechanic it's probably the biggest mechanic in street fighter it is like a, such such a big deal they're not they're not taking it out like probably ever it is definitely a core mechanic for the game personally i actually really enjoy it now you guys might comment oh that's because you have a skill issue one step i don't care it's fun it's a unique mechanic that in my opinion is used more defensively and makes for some crazy plays and some crazy moments that just make you go oh I've also heard that at low levels, people are spamming it, which again, it's very punishable. Because startup, it's very slow. And you can punish it right back with your own drive impact. You can grab your opponent. You can even parry it. So really, you have three options to defend against drive impact. But again, if used correctly, I think it's so cool. Not only are the effects by themselves so awesome with all the graffiti and all that, and all the graffiti is different colors and different effects per character and how they do their drive impact, but the whole drive system is quite literally what drives Street Fighter 6 and what sets it apart from being a completely different game but also familiar enough that you'll probably still love it if you love Street Fighter. Like any game in the world the devs trying to make a sequel of course they're going to try to innovate and be a little bit different and set themselves apart from their predecessor and be like this is a new game new experience. I mean Street Fighter 6 is bringing a lot more to the table to set itself apart than just the drive system but the drive system itself is the one of the main factors that make it different. For those that don't know or maybe haven't played the beta, the demo, or the game at all, the drive system is how Street Fighter 6 uses their bars up top to let you enhance your special move, making them stronger and whatnot. But of course, those bars have other uses like the drive impact, like the drive parry, allowing you to parry moves and even supers, allowing you to drive reversal so when you're in block stun, you can reverse the fight, turn the table, and even a rush cancel that allows you to dash closer to your opponent. There are just so many uses for the drive system, the drive bars up top. It's like, it's not just the drive impact, Impact is the whole drive system literally but again it just bothers me because people are like oh we, uh, this is such such a shitty mechanic it's like no it's not it's actually a great mechanic you just don't like it which is fine which is fine everybody has their opinion on like what you can and cannot like i'm just saying that if you don't like the mechanic 
why are you playing the game? Second of all, if you really don't like it that much, go back and play five. That's fine too. Like for an example, I wasn't a big fan of Mortal Kombat 11 not having the run mechanic that they had in MKX. And even though sure I could complain and say, oh, they should have had running in Mortal Kombat 11. At the end of the day, that's just how the game plays. So either I have to get used to it and actually enjoy the game for what it is and what they've given me, or B, I can pout and, and really complain online that Mortal Kombat 11 should have had running. That gets you absolutely nowhere. Just enjoy the game. Any game for what not just street fighter mortal not just fighting games racing games rpgs shooters whatever game you get just enjoy it for what it is especially when it comes to like core mechanics because there are things that you could complain about although the whole community could complain about and the devs will fix it or like you know patch it or whatever but when it comes to the core mechanics of the game like drive impact or even running in mortal kombat there those are the things they're not gonna like take out or add in like they, they weren't gonna just add running to the game because that completely changes the game the combo system and more same with the drive system they're not gonna just take that out because that is quite literally again the entirety of street fighter 6 that is what that is a core mechanic of the game so when it comes to being a core mechanic like those things why complain because they're not going to change it they're not going to take it out they're not going to do anything about it now if everyone in the community was complaining that reuse overhead was like you know too safe on block then sure the devs might fix that and patch that up but they're not going to take out a whole mechanic so the question being how does drive impact impact street fighter 6 how does the drive system impact street fighter 6 honestly it impacts it on a whole new scale a whole new level because again it, it, it literally is the game like that that is what street fighter 6 is all about it's about their drive system and how you use it as a fighter whether you use it more defensively more offensively whether you use it for only drive impact whether you use it to enhance your special moves and nothing else whether you like to use it for a dash your rush cancel you can do that too you can use it to drive parry there are so many uses for it because it is like the core the absolute definition of what sets street fighter 6 apart and if you learn to enjoy it you'll enjoy it it's actually fun and everyone uses it in a different way and a different variety do you want to get better at street fighter 6 but you're just tired of sitting in the training mode and just trying to do all these crazy combos street fighter 6 has a ton of training mode options and ways to practice and improve your skills as any character that you want to play today i'm playing manon but anything you see here today can be utilized with any character you play and it's not just training mode either that'll help you get better but in training mode let's say you got a character you've picked out you got some fun basic combos you know how to do with your character you have a basic understanding of how footsies work in the game with all the fundamentals like drive parry like drive impact you know how the game kind of works you just want to get better the first thing you're going to want to do is of course take it one step at a time and what i mean by that is what is the first thing that you want to work on finding ways to practice on that one thing and then go on to the next one so a couple of tips for you guys when playing practice mode in street fighter 6 there are a couple settings as you see here our screen's kind of blank there we can just train and do combos we can be like okay Okay, I can do this, I can do that. Okay, I can do all that. That's all fine and fun, but how do you make it better? In your settings, you have screen display settings. Now, a couple things you wanna turn on and off. The first thing I will turn on is attack data. Now, the reason why you wanna turn this on is of course you wanna see how much damage a combo might do. So this combo does 1100 damage, which is cool. But the biggest thing you wanna see is what attacks do overhead and low. So this attack, that's an overhead, meaning if my opponent is blocking but they're crouching, it'll still hit. And same with my sweep here, that's the low. Okay, so that, that move hits low. So if they're blocking normally, so for an example, if my my opponent's blocking a lot and I'm like, okay, what are they doing? I know I have this option to sweep them. So even if they're blocking high, they won't, they can't block that. Another thing that I would turn on personally is this frame meter. I'm gonna turn my camera off just for a second so you can see what I'm talking about here. This is the frame meter, meaning it shows you the startup of a move, the total active frames of it, and then the advantage you have and your opponent has as well. So for an example, my medium puncher, that has six startup, four active, 14 recovery, whereas my light punch has three startup, three active. So the faster move that comes out is my light punch. It's twice as fast as my medium punch and my heavy punch is nine on startup now another reason why this matters is because your special moves also have different properties depending on what type you use so for an example for manon's command grab we have three versions of it her heavy version as you see there is four on startup which is pretty fast then the medium version of the move is seven on startup and the light version is nine on startup so what that means for me is okay my heavy version of my command grab is actually faster the trade-off is the heavy version see how we missed that it doesn't really have that good of range with the light version it connects so I'm gonna say, okay, so my, my command grab, my light version is a bit slower, but it has a bit more range than my heavy version does. So if I want to come out faster, I need to make sure that I'm closer to my opponent to then do my heavy version of. So having this on teaches you what moves are faster, what moves are unsafe or not safe, what moves have good advantage on block and stuff like that. Another thing that I would turn on is this cancel timing display. The reason why I would turn that on is you see our character here, Manon, she glows red on certain moves. On that first hit, but not the second, you see that? And what that means for 
for you as a character is when I turn red, that means I can cancel. But what does cancel mean? Cancel means you can go into a special move, a super, a rush cancel. So I can do medium into special. I can do medium into super. I can even rush after that move into another combo. Another example for Manon is our back medium medium target combo. That first hit, nothing. But the second hit, it's an overhead I see there and it's also cancelable. So I say, oh, that's a good option for me because it's an overhead and it's cancelable into something else. So then I think, oh, okay, I can do a special after that. What should I do? I can enhance my kick. And what does that mean? I can do another special move after that. So I can go back medium medium and then end it with another special here and get a full on combo. And you might be asking yourself, well, one step, what does that blue, th what does that blue mean? See that blue right there we just turned? So blue means you still can cancel, but only into very specific things, like some supers and some specials. So after this kick, for an example, I can't go into a lot of stuff, but I can go into my spinning kick and I know I can go into a super if I want to as well. It's usually for supers, I'm not gonna lie to you. So there's a ton more settings you can go into for training. These are the basic ones that I would use to understand the training lab a lot better. And, and, and of course your character and go, okay, what is my character doing? Is it overhead, is it low? What's the damage on it? What's the frame on it? What's the cancel on it? These will teach you the fundamentals of your character and even the game and essentially just help you get better because of your understanding. Knowledge is power. Okay, I'm back, what's up? And a great thing to practice is your simple training settings here. You see we have with punish practice, punish practice, drive impact, defense practice. This is great because drive impact is a great mechanic and a utilized mechanic no matter what level you're at. Silver, bronze, iron, gold, diamond, whatever, you're gonna see drive impact happen and you gotta understand how do i defend against it let's go on and turn it on okay so we're gonna turn this setting on we see our opponent here we're going to do a drive impact what can we do for it? we can block it sure but what this is doing is having ryu go through four different kind of modes here and he's going to do drive impact at different times we can choose okay do we want to drive impact against it like do, when we recognize that the drive impact is coming out how do we react? Do we want to parry it? Do we want to grab them? Do we want to drive impact ourselves? I would recommend practicing all of that just for the sake of practice, right? So when you recognize a drive impact in game, your reaction is going to be a lot faster because you've been practicing this and go, okay, do I need to grab at this moment? Do I need to drive impact? What do I do? So let's go and try it out. Let's react. Oh, we barely reacted to that with our own drive impact. There we go. Now we get our own combo off. He's going to do it again. Let's go ahead and grab him instead. There we go. We punish it for that. Now let's parry it. There we go. Can we perfect parry it? Let's try that. There we go, now we got our own thing going on. So that just teaches you how to react to drive impact and that's great to have. And that's something that I'm personally still working on is trying to react to other people's drive impact and beat it with my own. It can be tight timing and hard to get the hang of, but once you do, it'll be a very powerful tool in your kit that you do not want to miss out on. By the way, my dudes, if you're enjoying yourself here, make sure to subscribe here for more content because we have new videos Monday and Friday. And who doesn't want more content? Now that's all fun and games in training mode. You can probably spend literal hours, dozens of hours in training and practicing all those things to try to get better and improve your skill set. Another way to practice is two things. I have made beginner guides for all the characters. Card up top right now. But in the game, they have character guides here. So if you want to start from scratch and go, okay, I want to learn how to play DJ. I have no idea what this guy is about. What can I do with DJ? They have basic info all the way through the special moves and tell you what they do, how they work, all their super arts and best ways to use them. And then of course, strategies, fundamentals and advanced as well for all the characters to help you get a very easy and fast understanding of the character in a matter of, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And then not only that, they have combo trials to help you understand the character at a beginner, intermediate and advanced level. And of course, these are not all the combos a character can do. These are just to teach you, hey, these are some fun ones that can go together combo wise to help you go, oh, okay, how can I make my own combos now? Like, Let's say I want to do this combo with Manon, which is a medium drive rush into a back heavy down special into a super move. Now what this teaches me is off the bat, oh, I can rush cancel after a medium. I didn't even know that. And of course you can end this however you want. I can go medium rush back heavy into any special I want. So though sure I can follow and do this move, I can end with whatever special I want, not just down special. But for an example, that was forward special, but it's still connected. And it's the way that I want to end the combo. I can even enhance that if I want to and end it again there. So though this is trying to have you do a specific combo, it's also teaching you what moves can go into what moves. Not only that, but in World Tour mode, there are so many mini games in World Tour to help you improve your skill set on these little things, such as parrying. There's a basketball mini game where the game will actually throw basketballs at you to help you practice your timing for the parry, try to get perfect parries, and then it'll throw a character at you to try to grab you, you gotta jump out of the way. There's another mini game that helps you understand when to jump and attack, when to stand attack, when to low attack with the board 
breaking. This is a really good mini game to help you shimmy, help you go for lows, help you for the poke game, help you with the footsies, to see when your opponent's blocking high or low and what to go for. I know this all might sound minute and simple, but you can't go advanced without getting the basics down first. If you're having trouble with the inputs, such as back down forward or forward down back or back forward square, whatever it is you're trying to work on with inputs, there's another input practice mini game in World Tour. You see here on screen, we're trying to do, you know, back and then down all the way then to our Y, then a Y and then down diagonally B. Let's say you're struggling with all that. This mini game helps you with that to get the timing down and really get your inputs incorrectly. And then if you play a charge character like Guile, E Honda, DJ, and others, there's a charge input practice mini game as well to help you with your charge timing. And a lot of people that want to play those characters, I've noticed in my comment section, do struggle with the timing on this. And this is a great mini game besides just practicing in the lab. This mini game helps you with the timing of those moves and go, oh, that's how long, or this is how fast I can do this, or whatever. It just helps you with that. So though not every character is a charge character, this still helps you with those characters and the timing of just playing the game in general. Not only that, but believe it or not, extreme battles are also a great way to practice the fundamentals of Street Fighter. Don't believe me? Check out the game mode with the rule set Heaven and Hell. And here's why Heaven and Hell is so good. It gives you a positive bonus and a negative bonus on fighting. So for me, I have a larger perfect parry window. Great, but I cannot dash. Dashes are disabled. So this teaches you how can I fight without dashing? I can jump in, sure, but then how do I get in there without dashing? I can't rush cancel either. That's that, That's called dashing. I can't dash forward. So how do I get in there, walk? So this teaches you like shimming. This helps you with that. Get in with special moves instead, but I cannot dash. I'm probably going to have to jump in and go, okay, I can jump in. What are my combos when I jump? Or for this example, I have special moves disabled, which is really rough for Manon because she relies heavily on her special moves a lot of the time. So this teaches me, okay, what can I do without special moves? What combos do I have that are effective without my special moves on me? So it's like, okay, this really teaches you why you can't get in with your spinning kick, that's a special move. You can jump in, but for heavy, heavy, that's great. So this teaches you how to actually react or how to, you know, kind of zone your opponent or get him into your opponent's face without the use of special moves. Another great one that I like to use a lot is rules and regulations. And the reason why this game mode is not a health based fighting game. This gives you and your opponent four objectives to complete during the match. You see here for us, knock down our opponent twice, throw one time, do a three hit combo and jump attack twice. So this teaches you, okay, I don't have to do anything crazy. I just got to do these couple things, jump in attack, let's do it again. So we, we jumped in, got punished for that, right? So we gotta try it again. There we go. Now we gotta do a, like a three hit combo. I can do that, I'm sure, right? There we go, we got three hit combo. Now I gotta throw my opponent here. But this teaches you not just what to do, but also how to do it. Like, okay, when's the best time to throw? Because I gotta throw to win this game. So I gotta be like, okay, I gotta shimmy here, play my footsies games. Oh, he got one objective. So he's gotta throw me. I'm on the lookout for that now. He's gotta drive parry and use his projectiles. Okay, so I gotta be able to see, there he goes. I gotta be on the lookout for all of this. I gotta knock down my opponent one more time. So I'm gonna try to sweep him to knock him down. There's my knockdown. We win, because we did all of our objectives there. And then we're gonna get new objectives this time. So we gotta jump attack, throw, special moves, and knock down our opponent. And he also has new ones too. So I gotta be on the lookout. He's gotta use overdrive arts and drive impact and drive parry while we're trying to do all of our stuff. So we gotta really kind of focus on like, okay, how do we get in there? We gotta jump attack, we gotta throw, there's a jump attack, here's a throw. Knock down our opponent that way. Special move, three hits, here we go. One more, there we go. So we, we complete our objectives that way. The best way to practice is to think of your training mode here as a lab or as an experiment, make it sound scientific, right? Because here is the scientific method for fighting games. Start with your observation or a question. This character keeps doing a combo on me that I just can't get past. Or how do I beat other characters, drive impact or their OD special move? And then form a hypothesis to your question. Go, I wonder if I block when they hit with their heavy button. I can punish with a sweep or a grab afterward and just test it out. Maybe the button or the move you're thinking of does work or it doesn't work. And then you go, okay, well, that does not work in this situation. Now I have to think of another solution and try that one out. And then even if you find a solution, make sure you analyze the data. And what I mean by that is does your solution work consistently and can you do it comfortably? Because if you can do it, you can only do it like one out of five times. Maybe there's another solution out there that might be a bit easier for you and be more consistent. A good mindset to have about this training mode here is this is where you find some solutions to your problems you can practice your combos of course practice your timing for drive impacts and other things and then once you do this go online casual rank battle hub whatever fight new opponents come up with new problems, and then have fun trying to find solutions to those problems in the lab like oh man i just fought a crazy jp he was zoning me out with my character how do i get in there go into lab fight a jp put him on cpu whatever and try to get in there come up with a solution see if those solutions work or not I promise you you keep doing that over and over again you will find solutions in your arsenal and once you practice them you will get better at them yeah so i can't believe it took me this long to realize but when playing modern controls assist combos are more 
more overpowered than I ever thought. And here's why. You guys might know playing most characters, but if you're playing modern controls, you have these assist combos, both light, medium, and heavy. And most of the time, they usually lead into, you know, super art one, two, and three. So for an example, when playing Manon, we have the assist combo, hold assist, medium, medium, medium. It uses an enhanced special and then goes into our super art one. And you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, of course, everyone's got the assist combos. What's the big deal? Now keep in mind, this affects both modern and classic players. Those that don't already know, when playing modern, your specials and your supers have a 20% decrease in their damage compared to their classic counterpart or normal. So to give you an example, here's Manon, super art one. Here's how it looks. 1600 damage, you see that there. Now let's go ahead and do that on classic just to show you. We're gonna go Manon, we're gonna go classic. And here's how that looks. So on classic, it does 2000 damage. So loving. of course, as you can see there, that is where the 20% damage decrease is coming from compared to modern. Now to switch back to modern to show you what this whole video is all about. So to show you the assist combo in modern controls for Manon, we have medium, medium, medium. As you see here, we do just do a you know normal kick into our enhanced special into our super R1. So off the bat, it's not really a crazy complicated combo. It's just an assist combo, but, but here's where it gets really weird. And I'm using this quick example to make it quick for you guys. Three hits, just kick and then it goes into our enhanced kick forward kick into our super art one and you might be thinking okay what's the big deal we're playing modern controls that combo assist combo does the same damage that it would do had we do it on classic controls you see what i'm saying that exact same combo does 3000 damage on assist combos in modern but you do the manual inputs on classic controls it still does 3000 damage you're not getting that 20 percent decrease on damage using your assist combos. I'm sorry, what? And I even did some extra testing and I'm gonna do those moves separately using the actual modern controls, not the assist combo button. I'm gonna do those actual buttons. So when I'm playing modern, I have that kick, right? I had that kick. And then I can do the forward enhanced special which is my special button enhancing it, and I can just press press the two buttons for my super, okay? So I'm gonna do those three moves in a combo separately, separate buttons. I'm not doing the assist buttons, I swear. I'm gonna do the modern controls for those things, ready? And you're gonna see here, 25, 20 on damage. So using the modern controls for that same combo is where I'm getting the 20% decrease on my damage. But if I just smash medium, I'm just smashing medium, okay? 3,000 damage. I'm not doing the classic inputs. I'm holding assist, smashing medium. I'm getting the full damage. But again, had I do that combo separately and do my super there manually in my modern controls, I'm getting a damage decrease. That's psychotic. To further reinforce my point here, let's go back to classic Manon. Manon, I can do the same exact thing, the same combo. So just on my medium kick there, forward enhance my kick into my super. Let's go ahead and do it. I'll show you that even in classic, using those actual modern, I mean, the, the manual inputs, we're still getting the 3,000 damage. 3,000 damage on classic controls. Like it's not a hard combo. It's kick, forward, kick, and then super. No, not really a problem. 3,000, but again, we're going back to modern. Just hold assist and do medium. We're getting the 3,000 damage combo. So this whole video, this quick whole video is to explicitly show you that, I can't believe I just found this out. If you know this before, I'm so sorry, but assist combos, they're not getting the damage nerf, in my opinion, that they should be. We're playing modern. I'm, I'm kind of a modern player here and there for some characters for a reason. We get the flexibility and the easy ability of my specials and our supers, but I understand the damage, you know, decrease the damage nerf. We shouldn't be getting our full damage, but our assist combos do. That's, I feel like the assist combos should be even more damage nerf compared to just doing our normal, you know, specials and our supers and stuff. Doing assist combos, they're, they're so assisted that I I feel like they should be like a 30 or a 40 percent damage nerf but they're not they're full damage compared to the classic inputs so if i want to do this combo right here right let's assist medium medium into my special 1400 damage why would i do the manual button here that's 1240 damage point is if i want to do just that two hit combo i'm going to just do medium medium into something else like a different super because now I'm getting the full damage from those first two hits compared to doing them manually in modern controls. So assist combos 
really kind of allow you to do the full damage specials and supers as long as you do the assist combos like like normally this super doesn't do full damage but you want i'll do it in this combo my assist combo and now it's getting full damage that's crazy and this applies to all the characters and all their assist combos and that even goes from a non-assist you know super r3 combo where we go into our super r3 this is doing that was my assist combo just hold assist heavy 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 this is doing the full damage again comparatively to its classic counterpart 41 20 that's that that's crazy so if you're a modern player that really affects you if you're a classic player that kind of affects you too because you'll be playing modern players out there and i just thought that was that was too crazy to not make a video about here is why you need to be learning long combos in street fighter 6 or any fighting game for that matter now behind me here you're gonna see playing a lot of long combos that might seem quite intimidating even for the more advanced players out there because even i watch this and i'm like damn that is this is going this is a crazy combo that i'm like first of all what's the point second of all how could could I do this? This is a lot. And it might seem like a lot, but I'm here to help explain today why honestly it's pretty essential that you learn as long of a combo as you possibly can. And here's why. A long combo, again, as you might see behind me here, is essential to learning a fighting game not to only do the long combo, but so that way you learn your character and you learn what moves can go into what moves. I'm not saying learn a 20 hit combo for the sake of always doing that 20 hit combo. I'm saying learn that 20 hit combo because you know hit five could also go into something else you can go all the way to hit 10 and then go into something else depending on your meter your super where you're at in the game what your opponent's doing how far you hit them in the air there's a lot of variables that might go into that exact you know that one combo but see that's what i'm saying that's why it's essential because you learning that 20 hit combo great you can do 20 hit combo awesome but what's more important about that is you learn oh that move at this height in the air or if my opponent does this and i punish them on this i can get to you know step seven in this 20 hit combo but then i'm going to change it up and end it this way you know instead of this way because of the situation that i'm in i'm not saying it's essential to do that 20 hit combo but if you can go for it i just wanted to bring this to the attention because a lot of people come to me and say yo one step i can't do these long combos and i'm like that's not a bad thing first because it just takes practice and there are so many games you can get so many wins you can get so far in any fighting game by not doing any long combos on you really you really could <laughs> you don't have to do these 20 hit combos to be good but on the opposite side of the fence i will argue that learning a long combo will teach you so many things about your character that you never knew before and will help enhance your gameplay your strategies your moveset your other combos because again your 20 hit combo let's pretend is just one line okay you go from step one to step 20 great but you've turned the straight line into a literal tree of other combos that you could do with your character with this with like with these moves in that order depending on your situation what supers what bars you have whatever it may be let's say you get to step six you know hit six hit seven and you're like oh i'm in the corner now i'm gonna go this route because i don't want to do my full normal 20 hit combo it's gonna be better if i do this because then they're gonna land in the corner then i can go this way you know with my other combo they're the see what i'm saying there's just so much you could do by learning and knowing and understanding that first that one that that one 20 hit combo will teach you so much i would argue that learning a long combo would only Almost teach you everything you would need to know about your character you'd go oh that leads into this or i can put that into this or this might go into this or this is good okay because when they're on the ground i can rush and put pressure on them with this combo instead which might be more beneficial than just finishing the combo this way you see what i'm saying i know it might be a bit confusing but to help you understand you ending the combo this way so that way they end on you know your left side instead is beneficial to you because you want to put pressure with this combo instead of ending the the previous combo this way all i'm saying is learn as long of a combo as you possibly can with your character it'll help you it'll teach you it'll help you understand your character the game your own combos your own mechanics and so much more and again i'm not saying you have to do that long combo every single game i'm saying learn it specifically for the reason of helping you understand your character and you may never do that 20 hit combo again and that's totally fine because again now you know oh i'm gonna get to hit six but then i'm gonna go ahead and do this combo instead or i'm gonna end it this way see there's just so many routes you could do with that one 20 hit combo that we're talking about here and you might comment and argue and say yo one step i've gotten this far and i've never done a combo over 10 hits 
I, I agree and that's totally fine. You probably understand your character on a very good level. You'd know that you can do these three, four or five hit, you know, these simple combos, but they just work very well and that's totally cool. I'm just saying that a big tip by learning a big combo is this whole entire video. That's what I'm trying to say is learning that combo is everything I've already said before.